Eureka, you found us. Welcome to the Checkout California Radio Show, your key to California hospitality. Hosted by Rad Gantos, principal of Rad Gantos and Associates, a hospitality and commercial real estate design firm, and Craig Sullivan, executive vice president of ParkWest GC, a hospitality and commercial real estate general contractor. Checkout California is focused on our state's hospitality, travel, and tourism markets, and on the large part they play in California's vibrant and innovative economic diversity and unique quality of life. Now, here are your hosts, Rad Gantos and Craig Sullivan. Good afternoon and welcome to Check Out California. I'm Craig Sullivan and this is Rad Gantos. We co-host this program twice a month on the OC Talk Radio Network and we've got a very special guest with us today, Miss Nan Richardson from ACS. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's, it's our fun. pleasure. You need to get a little bit closer to the microphone. Okay. There you go. Nan, why don't you give us a little bit of your background and then let's discuss your company a little bit. Okay. Well, I have been um, fortunate enough to be involved in the commercial real estate, hospitality, architecture, and design world for 25, 30 years now. Um, and it's something that I absolutely love. Um, it's I, in your DNA. It is. It is. Anything <laughs> creative and um, being able to change things and make them look Beautiful mm -hmm. is something I've been involved with my whole life. Right, I, yeah. I started my first part of my career in the fashion and design world um, and was a menswear buyer, ran a couple of men's stores, and was a fashion model for a long time. Wow. So it's now, we've kind known of, each other for a number of years, and I, that's the first time I've heard that. So. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So dressing, you know, whether I'm designing hotels or or dressing people or whatever, it's kind of all the same to me. So. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So tell us about ACS. You Ace joined them, what, two years ago now? Um, it's just been over a year, year. now. Okay. Yeah, I had a big one-year anniversary last Congratulations. month. Congratulations. Yeah, and um, it's a really fun company. We are um, growing like crazy. Uh, we have three offices. We're in Newport Beach, Milwaukee, and Atlanta, so that we can cover the whole country and basically get there in, within two hours for any, any location in the United States. And we do um, architecture, store planning, and um, construction management for retail and hospitality Cality. brands, oh, big and, brands. And then let's give everybody the website so they can follow while we're talking. What's the website for ACS? Do we know? It's acs-architects.com. Oh, yeah. That's it. Very good. So you've been there a year. Tell us about some of the projects that you've worked on and hospitality and retail in Southern California? Well, in Southern California, we have or been... Or California. Okay, we have been the um, sole architect, I think, for Ayers Hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have two of them just in the process of being finished, one in Rialto, one in Chula Vista, but we have worked on a number of them. They did a really nice one up in uh, Sonoma that was really pretty. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, locally as well, we just finished the Spring Hill Suites for Marriott in Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, that's kind of a... Just down the street. Yep, yep. just right, uh, right up the street. So, And then some of our retailers, we we work with big national brands, uh, Target, Macy's, um, Starbucks. Um, we're doing a lot with Walgreens, those type of things where they're big programs where they come up with a new concept. Right. And then we help... Um, go in and roll them out to say 500 locations mm. and put in the new concept and get them built and very nice that's yeah. got to be you know a, a fascinating change from hospitality because now you've got this retail component that whether it's a Walgreens or a Target it's a it's a national brand that everybody knows and you're coming in there to help them launch you know something new within the confines of their their operation or you and you're also doing the design for their next generation stores too right, aren't you right yeah. we're working on new concepts for olive garden and for yard house um and then once we come up with those it's really it's we're kind of a unique company because we have a, probably one of the largest groups of store planners mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand that architects really can't they're not store planners. Right. They go in and they have to understand retail and the flow and how many SKUs have to be on the floor. And 
um, how to move it around like operations, a giant operations, operations, linear and, shelf spacing, yeah. yeah, product distribution, exactly, collections, yeah, yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. But what's interesting is um, when it relates to hospitality. Um, we go at projects a little bit differently, and that's part of something I'll tell you about later on kind of tips of how-tos. But we engage our construction managers, our architects, okay. and even the store planners when we're looking at a new hotel or a new project um, from all sides, from operations, from constructability, from value engineering, because a lot of the, you know, the contractors yep. can work with the designers, if we bring them the interior designers in right up front, right they enough. can make yep. suggestions so that people don't go all the way down the road and design things mm -hmm. and then come back and go, wow, that's, you know, $400 a mm -hmm. square foot and it has to be at 200. Mm -hmm. You know, what if we do um, oak and we stain it like maple mm -hmm. and nobody will really know the difference mm -hmm. or things right. like that. Yeah. So we go, we go at projects um, from a little different angle than a lot of architectural firms. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, especially, okay, look, there's a vast difference between the Marriott product select service you just did and right. the Ayers Hotel, okay? So, yeah, you want something that's durable that gives you that nice look in that Marriott select service because that's a workhorse of a hotel. Right. You know, you've got kids, families, business travelers, free breakfast, in and out, where the Ayers Hotel is a different model. It's more yeah. upscale, more of a boutique in its nature, and... The finishes are, you know, European and, you know, really totally different than what you're getting in into uh, with Marriott or Hilton. You know, though, right. Craig, it's funny because I just I just spent about four days in, in Palm Springs and at an extended family, so we stayed at a Marriott, okay? And it's interesting that to notice the activities. People were in and out, true, but there was a lot of activity that was happening on the property later on at night where people... Cons uh, consolidated around fire pit or in the jacuzzi or whatever and there was a lounge you know mm -hmm. they're, they're all trying to be more loungy more grab and go more cafe more bistro and there were certain things that were being missed there are certain things that were missed even though this was a repetitive rollout that were being missed specific to that location and uniqueness of the of where the place was i saw a book on cross-country skiing in Palm and, and, and Palm yes, and, and, and a book <laughs> nice. on and a book on a, on an old hotel on the Jersey Shore, sitting on the library bookcase yeah. of the of Palm of Marriott and Palm Springs, and so it's really interesting to see how that also sometimes gets missed. But to your point, that bringing them in early, right, absolutely has a direct impact on loss of loss of time, downtime before opening, because value engineering is going to come in anyway. Right. And understanding the budget, like right up front. Right. And people don't like to do that. I mean, including procurement, because you can't have it go all the way down. I've seen that. this a ton of times, and yeah. they get all the way down this great path, uh -huh. and then they go to order all of their furniture and case goods, and they're yeah. like, that's way out. And then they have to go back and redo everything. And I really think it's so important to come in at the very beginning. Right. And, and then have... The other thing is having face-to-face -face mm -hmm. meetings because a lot of companies will tend to hide behind the keyboard and you just it doesn't give you the opportunity to sit down and kind of brainstorm with mm -hmm. the other, you know, the contractor and the interior and the architect and really, you know, look at what you can do. Now, you bring up a great point because one of the biggest trends I'm, I'm sure everybody's been hearing, but it's, it's making it local and it's giving it personality right. and changing it more into the lobbies being more like a home and a lounge area and having getting people out of their rooms and into common area where they can hang out and talk. Um, and it's a great idea to look at hiring like local interior designers that understand personality and the the cool things that are around or artists or things like yeah, that. Yeah, those you are missed opportunities that you yeah. see right. all the time. We see all the time yeah. where they don't bring in that local flavor for the artist or they don't take yep. advantage of cross-branding with some local resources, right. which make that experience a unique experience. The take-behinds, the things that they will take with them from that shop later on are unique to that space. Yeah, and I think a lot of the... the the brands, if they don't get on board with that, they're going to lose a lot of business because it. I don't care if you're a, you know, a straight brand, you've got to you've got to infuse some interest and. In yeah, I couldn't agree more with branding. you. Right, yeah. right, and and you're seeing that. I mean, with yeah, the soft yeah. brands, with with uh, you know Marriott and 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 Hilton in particular, and IHG, you know, you're getting that, mm -hmm. and that is going to trickle down to the standard 
plain vanilla Marriott where right. it's going to be celebrating, you know, the local community. And, I, and you know, I yeah, you look at the boutique side and the influences now back on the standard branded hotel are astronomical. And it's going to continue to go that way, especially yeah. as we've got the millennials and everybody else coming up and not so much Gen X spending the money. It's going to be the other generations. Right, so, right. Um, you know, you brought up a good point when you're getting together with one of your projects, the, the face-to-face meetings often early. Um, I know that we try to, you know, bring everybody in early and we do mm-hmm. weekly meetings, monthly meetings, and procurement is, you know, one of the things that can make or break a, a good project. Right. And, you know, we've been very fortunate to, to work with a pure, few procurement companies and i gotta tell you they've they've absolutely delivered every time so you know get get there know your dates know when you need to get in line in china for your furniture packages and everything else get your orders in early yeah get all of your long item long term items ordered way up front yeah value engineering isn't holding the money until the last minute right Right. some people believe that's value engineering that's That's not value no that's not that's just being cheap no you know the other cool thing that I, I think this is one of the most exciting times in the industry between retail, restaurants, and hospitality yeah. because now they're all merging, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, retail's completely having to, the shopping centers are having to readjust, and it's all it's all merging into one. Experiential. Yeah. Um, the Spring Hill Suites that we just finished, I don't know if you're aware, but um, West Elm, mm-hmm. the furniture company, has a big deal they've done with Marriott. And the first round is with Spring Hill Suites, Suites. and the one in Huntington Beach is one of the. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't aware of that, and I went in there to do some photography the other day, and most of the lobby furniture, it it's home. fabulous. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, in the rooms, there's a lot of their furniture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from what I understand, because I've met with West Elm and done some work, that you can actually go online if you like the furniture in the mm-hmm. hotel. You can, you can order have it, it order yeah. it for your home, and I think you're going to see a lot more. Yeah. A lot more um, cross marketing and things like that. Where oh, you've got it with you Tommy know? Bahama and a couple right. of Restoration others. Restoration 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 Hardware, Hardware. Yeah. which is which is really funny because it's 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 a new take on an, on a slightly old concept, right. Right? right? Right. Where all these hotels basically started putting out their heavenly beds, right? And Star Wars and, and, and what have right. you, yeah. and then you know the catalog that followed, and now instead of actually having their own. Which is basically somebody manufacturing and their labeling mm-hmm. is just to actually literally go with somebody that is retail and is out there and is high enough that they would basically equate it to their brand and providing that. And it'll probably still be customized line for that particular hotel property. Yeah, yeah. but or I think brand. it's helping the retailers yeah, too give them a, you know another um, venue for another channel. Yeah, right. Um, for whether it's just marketing or picking up new mm-hmm. you know customers. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great idea. And then even seeing the retail, how it's changing in hotels, mm-hmm. right. where you've got, you know, instead of having your, your old school gift shop that just had right. junk and shot glasses and <laughs> T-shirts and, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> um, Made you know, in China, life is a beach on the coast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Now you're starting to see some of the retailers actually coming in. Like Trina Turk was one of the first ones that was really trendsetting in boutique hotels. And oh. she goes in and actually leases the space. Yeah. And then manage it and and um she she buys all of the goods and has her team work in it and it's there's another new revenue for just like the f and b for hotels right mm-hmm. right and they're getting better at it right yeah, they are right you know nan there, it's interesting there i i spoke at a, co- at a conference a long time ago that was about retail and apparel and mm-hmm. it was resort apparel and it was retail and and it it was interesting to see that the properties were completely at a loss of how to merchandise the stuff out of the brands from the retail side. And the retail side, all they wanted to do was put the stuff in a box and send it over for somebody else to set up. Right. And there was a disconnect that was so easily remediable to what you're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad to see that happen because there was great opportunity for both of them. Absolutely. And yet all they needed to do was actually have that retail person come in and merchandise. Merchandise and staff and it with staff people it. that mm-hmm. are retail, not just you know an yeah. older... Um, you know, housekeeper that you have that can babysit the store. Yeah. It's just retail is a different animal. Yep. And um, knowledge base, training, yeah, you yeah. Know, familiarity with product. Yeah. Oh, you've have, been working with that in the spa side. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw, we, we yeah. saw it on the spa side, you know, for a long time ago, yeah, but yeah. even today, the amount of retail that is basically provided the spa side, which has a 60% margin, <laughs> is not enough. 
And big part of it is because they don't bring in that knowledge base early enough to program right. that space to have it be maximizing on the revenue generation. Right, and train the people and that train are the there. there. You know, yeah. that's that's true. And I mean, I, like I said, I started out in retail at 14 and a half. I worked in a men's clothing store, and I remember my mom had to drive me to South Quest Plaza to drop me off. <laughs> but he was probably one of the best mentors ever. It was a big, it was like a men's haberdashery. Yeah. So it had everything from sportswear to sport... Um, Custom suits. I think I think I know where that used yeah, to be. Yeah, it used to be called Guy Living Stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But he he just was so good at how customer service one oh one and it was very simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and how to um sell brands that you have by putting them in the windows and showing right. them. It'd be funny. We could have, you know, some jackets and things that haven't sold for months. Put them in the window. Put them in the window and we'd sell out of them. They're gone. You yeah. know? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's kind of like old school, but some of the retailers now, I'm just blown away. They yeah. just, they don't train their people. No, they it's don't. It's like service 101, whether it's ho hospitality. Yes, <laughs> right? hospitality. Right? We talk there about it all the time on this show. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, you Hospitable. Look at, that's part of hospitality. Yeah, it's in the exactly. name. Exactly. Hey, exactly. how can I help you? Yeah. Right. You know. Thank Welcome. you for being here. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. Yeah. 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 But you're seeing it more and more projects. You've got this hotel enhanced mixed use. You've got mm -hmm. retail on the ground floor. Yeah. You've got F and B on the ground floor, both part of the hotel and you know exterior entrances going into specific restaurants. You've got you know some condos or lofts or other things mm -hmm. in the hotel. So you know Full it's service, it's making yeah. that 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 complete change. I, and I think you're seeing more and more of that in some of the hotels around here. You look at the the Marriott over on Bon Carmen. Mm -hmm. They did a renovation on that two years ago, and they started celebrating Newport Beach and Orange County and brought in a lot of local photography. And they were one of the first ones in this area that stopped calling at the lobby and started calling at the living room. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's a good you know, idea. Yeah, we've got con conversation areas and everything else. So, it's yeah, it's it's an exciting time to you know be in design, construction, the boundaries in the hotel of the industry. Yeah, I think, one, it's, I think it's I think it's great mm -hmm. because you can think out of that box mm -hmm. that we right. talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And for so many years... I mean, working with, you know, shopping center developers, and it was so, well, you get an anchor store, you build this shopping mm -hmm. center like this, and that's just how it's done. And it's like, no, it's not. Anchor yeah. tenant, another one. Yeah, right. it's so Turn boring. Around, sell and the yeah. property. finally, yeah. you know, it's because I was involved with the guys that started in the surfwear industry. You, it all grew up around here, right? Yeah. Um, and I remember working with um, the guys from Maui and Sons were mm -hmm. really close friends of mine. And I told Jeff a long time ago that was the designer. I go. You should go in, and they should start doing some branded hotels. So let you just kind of do the, the big picture on the design. Right. But it would be like a, a Maui and Sons themed mm -hmm. hotel, mm -hmm. you know, or a Quicksilver. Or, mm -hmm. And I think Quicksilver went down the road on that. I don't know what happened. But now you're seeing, you know, a lot of the big the big brands have done it, um, some of the luxury brands. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, it's, it's where you can start getting creative and blurring the lines and using talent that's out there that's not just, you know – you just go to the people that always have been because it is, mm -hmm. you know. You the way to, we've done it for the last year. Right, years. and, yeah. you, you know, now it's more acceptable to put small teams that have a lot of expertise in, in areas yeah. instead of, you know, having to use the security of hiring one giant architectural Central firm, firm that has, yeah. because it's a big name and it's safe, well, right? Some, sometimes it's an ocean liner that moves very slow, and we're yeah. in a very competitive industry and a very right. competitive market, and you have to be very in, innovative, very quick, mm -hmm. and sustainable. And sometimes yep. that big ocean liner is not the right vehicle to be on. Right, yeah. right. You need a speedboat, a cigarette boat. There yeah, well, go. a whole bunch uh, of them yeah. around, so yeah. you all can yeah, yeah, yeah. circle around that yeah. ship. There you go. Yeah. What are you seeing for market changes out there right now? What do you, you know, is there a hot button that, you know, okay, Marriott's now putting this into all their full service or doing something different to their select service. What are you seeing out there that's, that's going to change the market? Well, I'm seeing a lot of just, I think it's interesting, the locations that um, the brands and the developers are looking to put hotels. I think that's a big change in this market. Um, like I said already, you know, the, the retail centers, yeah. mm -hmm. um, that's like a real hot one right now, mm -hmm. trying to find, they're all looking for great space. Um, in well, a lot of malls are going out, so malls. it's just re repositioning them, right. those properties. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then... Then they're doing a lot of around universities. Mm -hmm. It's extremely popular. I'm working with two developers that are really, really interested in finding some properties like that. Mm. Um, Hospitals and universities. Yeah. They're almost recession-proof. Yep. 
you know, the population's getting sicker, and we've always got more kids going to school. So <laughs> that's right. Know. That's right. Yeah. Well, and you have and you have older people that have an affinity to that alma mater that will still want to go back in. There oh, absolutely. Now and take that retirement home that's on campus and get all their education. You know, after the fact that they've raised their kids. Right. You know, it's just right. you know. So there's a lot of new focuses that. To your point, people, developers, if they're smart, they're looking at these little niche markets right. that are underserved. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, God, there's so many brands coming out. It's crazy. Yeah, we've right? launched one a month for 45 months now. I know. There's. It's a little confusing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's say the least. You know, I personally absolutely adore the boutique <coughs> industry because right. mm -hmm. there's just so much you can do and such creativity and yeah. um and you know, bringing it, changing the the meeting the meeting space is really different too now. Yeah. It's having to become, you know, entertainment space, uh, band stage. Um, very mixed use. Very or, mixed use. Yeah, yeah. Multifunction. Very yeah, and it has to be very um, modular, mm -hmm. movable, scalable. Yeah. And it's just there's a lot of fun things that you can do if you. I think the Moxie in New York is is one of my favorite ones in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. You know, yeah, that's got a great the, hotel. Uh, yeah, the rooftop where you've got yep. the little putting green and you've got the bar and when weather's appropriate. And then, what is it, I think the third floor or fourth floor where they've got the restaurant. And there's also private meeting space that can double as a private dining room if you want to have a, a, a you know little dinner party there. Right, so, or weddings or Weddings, big, any big number draw. of things. Yeah. And I think you're seeing you know a lot of these unique boutique standards almost mm -hmm. coming over to whether it's moxie or tapestry or canopy or time and you know various others that are that are out there so it's it, again it's a good time to be in the hospitality you know what side. else is kind of interesting i was just reading that um you know dual brands are very they're getting really yeah. hot right now um and that's kind of an obvious because it, it helps offset co-brand yeah yeah co-branding but then it elf off excuse me oh. offsets the cost of staffing you yeah. can use back of the house share them um, and then I was one even pool, one laundry. Yep, one rooftop bar. Yeah. Um, you can have a you know one that's more for mm -hmm. the millennial over here. That's maybe, um, you know, one style upper end for other people. Right. But I also was reading now some people are looking at doing triple branding and doing them There's... layered in one building and having several floors of one brand, several floors of the next. Yeah. So I find it's really it's really interesting. There's at least two of those under construction right now in the East Coast. So yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, I was reading. Yeah. It's, now it, I wonder from an architectural standpoint, I mean, you know, it's it'd be a different because each one's a different um, animal, right? And, well, well and, and, and operationally too, and right? operational. I, I mean, yeah. You know, standards for, most wise. of those are select service, so there's not a whole right. lot of difference. Okay, it's really about the price point and the amenities. So you're yeah. going to put a courtyard and a in a residence in, you know, and and maybe you know a Spring Hill or something else. Now, if you're going to do, you know, I, I mean, you, you've seen the the dual branded full service. We've got one of the, the most beautiful ones in in California, in downtown LA, with the JW and the Ritz Carlton. Right. Okay. That's beautiful. It worked out really well. Not so sure, you know, if there's really a savings if you're doing a select service and a full service because it is such a different animal. Right. The operations right. and the, the yeah, it's yeah. So, so the, the shared amenities and, and the public areas, I mean, at some point they're gonna cross over. I mean I keep going back, was it Mandalay that has the, the hotel at? Isn't that one that, that I, they had, changed that name yeah, to well, something else? But yeah. There was a situation yeah. where you had a large property that basically wanted to have a boutique component yeah. tower, yeah. and so they basically put in that right. thing. But you still had to walk through common areas to get to it, and so unless you have a separate entrance and you yeah. reopen everything, you yeah. can't have. A, you know, they've got to be appropriate for each right. other, um, and. You can't have, you know, a Ritz Carlton and a well, Spring Hill Suites. No, you know, it's just there's happen. no way. Yeah, right. it's there's no happen. way. And remain appropriate. <laughs> yeah. right? right. Because right. today appropriate, <laughs> five years from now, is that still appropriate <laughs> exactly, or not? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna we're almost a halfway point, so Paul's gonna play a commercial and we'll be back in just a minute. From Eureka to San Diego, from Malibu to Bakersfield. The California Lodging Investment Conference, CLIC, is a one-of-a-kind conference focusing exclusively on our Golden State's hotel market. 
Click was launched in 2016 to harness the knowledge of our industry leaders, support our community, and educate emerging talent. Click brings together lodging professionals from California and beyond for one day of learning, professional development, and networking. If you're in the California hotel market or plan to be, you should attend Click 3 on March 7, 2019 at the Western South Coast Plaza Hotel. We invite you to check out the California Lodging Investment Conference website at cliconference.com for the latest details. Early registration now open, and as a listener of the Checkout California radio show, please make sure to use our exclusive discount code of CLICK, C-L-I-C, when registering for this one-of-a-kind California hospitality event that sold out the last two years. Do you want a free analysis of your inbound marketing? Do you want it in 30 seconds or less? Then check out Marketing Grader, the free marketing tool from HubSpot. It's simple. Just go to marketinggrader.com, enter the URL that you want to analyze, and Marketing Grader will instantly give you a detailed report grading your lead generation, mobile marketing, social media, competitive benchmarking, and more. It's simple, it's powerful, and it's free. Marketinggrader.com. Welcome back. This is Check Out California. I'm Craig Sullivan, Brad Gantos, my co-host, and Nan Richardson are all here in the studio today. And thank you again for joining us. I appreciate you being here, Nan. Let's talk about what you're seeing out there right now. What do you... Give us a little bit of insight to some of your projects. Okay, you've given us a little tidbit earlier about, you know, team meetings. You know, when you've been engaged for a project, what are some of the first things that you do to ensure that this is going to be a successful project? Well, I think because we have done so much national work for retailers, um, we have got a lot of experience with the cities and municipalities. Um, we do all of our entitlement work in-house. We don't, nice. we, we don't go out um, because we want someone that knows mm -hmm. how to go in and negotiate, and if it's something small that they just need changing, we can even, you know, try and help them right there or understand instead of leaving it and then coming back and telling someone. So that's that's a really key thing. Um, and then um, just being able to work around, I think, well, anywhere around here. Yeah. That's my train of thought. <laughs> well, I think, I, th I, th I think where you... I totally you, lost where I was going. I think, I think okay. where you were going with this is that it is super critical when you're dealing with something that you have that local expertise, that, that you have Correct. that, and, and not just in terms of familiarity with environment and how that translates into design, but how do you navigate the waters with the city, with regulations, have a familiarity with what will fly, what will not, because those are all that's all advice that you bring to a client that may be familiar or maybe not. They may right. be looking for putting in a property in a market that they haven't been before, and they don't know what the pitfalls are, and they may very innocently walk into something that six months earlier or a year and a half earlier was not on their radar screen, but actually is going to be problematic if they go down that particular path. So that local expertise, I think, is super critical when it comes to getting a project off the ground. Right. That's where I was going. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. Exactly. It's, it, it's very true, and it, it's missed it all is. the time yeah. because they're, people are looking at background expertise, blah, blah, but sometimes that local experience is basically put on the back burner, and unfortunately, that could kill a project. Right. Very right. And easily. Just, and just knowing the, the um, kind of the personalities and the – Personalities? There's personalities, personalities involved? Do in they the play well together? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you know, and who's really difficult yeah. and kind of how to work around that is, yeah, yeah. is crucial. Maybe it's not the head project. of the building department. Maybe it's the second person in command. Uh, yeah. Should be. Whoever yeah. works, you know, yeah. whoever you can yeah. get in. And, there. Right. Yeah. How many about. renovations are you doing right now on hospitality projects? We are, most of ours right now are ground up. Ground up, okay. Yeah, we, we I think... We don't, I don't think we have any renovations, renovations. at this current time. Um, okay. The hotel portion of our company is about 30% um, and trying to grow right now. Um, right. And so we've mainly been doing ground ups. Mm -hmm. for his, this, the Spring Hill Suites was ground ups. Um, we've done some Hiltons. Um, 
I think in the past, way back prior to me, there was several renovations. Okay. Now, you, we love we'd love doing those. Yeah, and I think you know, that's as construction yeah. funds get tighter and tighter, you do more, more and more of, more of that. More of yeah. that. But, and la- you know, there's not a lot of land. Mm-hmm. No. You know, so. no, well, there is, but you don't want to build in some of those areas. It's just like no. desirable right. location you know, wise. Right. Yes, it's more, yeah. right. a lot of built out areas. Right. Yeah. But uh, tell us about some of the Hilton projects that you you guys have done. No. Just they were Northern California, Southern they, California. They were Northern California. They were. Um, I believe in Texas. Okay. We had a couple of, quite a few in Texas. Texas. Um, I can't. No zoning makes it easy. I know. Yeah. I know. And everything's big there. Right? There. Yes. Yes. Right, and right. flat. Right. <laughs> so what are some of the tips you have to avoiding going over budget and schedule some of your projects? Well, I think, you know, going back to having the team get together right up front, yeah. um, hiring, hiring the right appropriate mm-hmm. designers um, that understand whatever the, the brand and the concept is and working right up front all, as well with the contractor yeah. so that you can, um, you know, keep things very tight. You have to have really good communications um, and trying to be out on site as much as possible. Um, you know, it's kind of the same things that we've reiterated is really taking the time yeah. to flesh everything out up front so that you know what you're doing and, and um, everybody's on the same page. For each project every and single each personality. Project. So. Yep, yep, and every single team. Um, and and really clean, or clearing how you like to be communicated with. You mm-hmm. know, what's the best way for each team? Right. You know, it, you know do you prefer co- personal calls? Do you like emails? Do you, you know... Right, especially yeah. these days with text right. and uh, what is that thing? Slack, is it? Slack. Slack, and you know sometimes these threads just become really ridiculous, and the communication yeah. quality is, right. is is falling apart. How important do you think it is, Nan? Because again, it's something that I don't hear enough about. How important do you think it is about managing expectations? That's probably one of the the largest as well as. That's what I'm asking. And it. that's that's basically looked to as the architect's job is to managing expectations, managing the team. Um, and Sometimes I think that's, that's tr- it's very difficult. difficult yep. It's very difficult. Um, and you really have to go out of your way to try and figure mm-hmm. out what are the hot buttons for the developer or the brand? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the crucial things that have to be there? Where is it you can push back a little bit? Um, what are the personalities? Because you know, managing, take the time. Well, but that managing expectation is not necessarily just solely internally, right? Because also no. managing expectations of the client, managing expectations of the municipalities. I mean, everybody involved, right? Right. It's, yeah. Yeah, and you really have to be flexible. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that I always like to say is there's two words involved kind of in architecture and design, and there's ego mm-hmm. and there's humility. Mm-hmm. And if you are presenting ego, your team's not going to listen. Um, your clients aren't going to be happy and you have to take the humility side of saying hey you know what you could be right my design might be a little mm-hmm. bit off can you help me out here give me an idea or you know what we we should work through this instead of me just trying to hammer you and say no my design has to look like mm-hmm. this and it has to be this <laughs> well, i see that all the time and you know mm-hmm. because i've worked in, with people right like that. and yeah. you know mm-hmm. craig and i are both um in business development and that that's a very strange animal i always tell people that when you're dealing you with have ego to be a strange pe- person to yeah. do what we do yeah, right because we're constantly talking to people having to yeah. listen to what they say um try and read you know who might be the best team to match them up with yeah. and I, i've sat in so many planning meetings and there's it's forgotten art to listen you know to just hear what your client's saying or what the other team's saying instead of trying to make them listen to you Wait for the opening to get right, your stuff out. Right, you yeah. have to you have to really sit back, watch their body language, and I think that's yeah. something right that yeah. you have to learn to survive as a business development yeah. person. You really have to be flexible and not ego driven, or you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere. You're, Nowhere. You got to be the fly on the wall. You got to pay sometimes, attention. Sometimes to everybody, you have to be the bearer time. of bad news. You sometimes you got to you, you got to pull a person off from the ledge. I mean. Mm-hmm. And, and be willing to do that in a very loving and kind manner because yes. it's in their best interest and they can't see it right. internally or otherwise. Right. You know, there's there. I've I did a big re- um, renovation for a Radisson in, in Anaheim previously, and it was so funny because talk about managing expectation. 
renovations are a challenge, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the brand, it's switching from one to another, and they've got their PIP, and they're saying, you've got to do this. And then this was a, a new owner mm -hmm. um, from Thailand, and his parents were really the ones, and I don't know if I go into it, but anyway, it was very difficult managing the expectation of the costs and right. how to, you know, um, what it, it realistically mm -hmm. costs to bring mm -hmm. it up to what the PIP saying, yeah. and um, but doing it so you're not insulting them and you're respectful mm -hmm. um, is, you know, it's something that I think a lot of people miss out on. Well, yeah, I've worked for quite a few architectural firms, and I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I've seen us as an industry fall down because there's a lot of ego, and they don't they don't think about, okay, we've got a budget to work yep. here. It's a very special project for these people. Sometimes it's only one that they own. Right. And you have to be respectful of that and try and do... And it's their first one, and you've got you've to the guide you them can, along. You so. know, and help them out. Go ahead and, and answer be the honest. phone, Rad. <laughs> I have no idea how to answer this phone. I've been here for four years. I don't know how to answer this phone. Okay. Phone. Who, no, who, who handles the phone? The joys of the live phone. radio. I know. So. Say hello. Yeah. No, no. It's like <laughs> plugged to the wall. I don't know what to do with this thing. But, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's interesting because you're right. It is a lost art form. And it's yeah. funny because we, we have forever talked about our industries in terms of design or architecture as being sometimes isolated in an ivory tower and not really giving the training needed right if you're fortunate enough to have gone through it and knocked your knees around a little bit and you've kind of learned along the way and you're the kind of personality that will absorb the lesson you have gotten to be a little seasoned and better at it right but there it's really interesting because it is a common situation and people a lot of firms would be very well served if they actually took some of that time and trained their people mm -hmm. in exactly what you're talking about right and you know i think that's one thing that's really unique about acs and like i said i've worked for some of the big mm. big firms um it's a really good group of people that really try and listen and they really care right. about trying to do something better. And some of these big projects that we have to turn, you know, 500 space or 500 projects in, you know, six months or a mm -hmm. year, it can test you. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I've been very impressed with the people in our store planning and our construction management because they're all really good people that want to take the time to sit down and listen mm -hmm. and try and work it out. You know, an interesting story, we did a, um, we were asked to come in, there was a, a new concept, st concept store for a retailer, a big retailer, big telephone retailer. And they had done a concept um, design through a big, well-known international um, architecture firm. They came up with it. And unfortunately, it came out to like almost $250 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Well, in retail, when you're rolling mm -hmm. that out, it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. So they said, can you help us out? Um, and this is kind of how we approach all projects is why I'm telling you this story. Um, we came in and we pulled everything apart from um, the drawings to the ceiling to the, um, to the procurement, mm -hmm. um, everything. We looked at it, materials, took it apart. We actually found a lot of money that was being wasted in the procurement, which unfortunately we were kind of stepping on some of the internal toes. But, right. but you know, we got it down. They said, we have to get this down to like 100 square feet or we can't roll this out. And we actually did that. It came out to $103 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Now, this, granted, this wasn't in Southern California. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, they um, – and the, the big architect came back in and they really couldn't tell any difference in the design except for the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a cool thing that we can offer. Yeah. We, we look at projects like that, try and take them apart and see where we really can help um, – well, listen to your listen to your budget and get get what you want out of it. Help the designers right. get the look that they want. Yeah. And and uh, well, that's yeah. a, that's a substantial saving. I mean, you're talking about half the cost. You're talking about a national rollout, a repositioning of a brand. You're talking about potentially in a situation, not necessarily in this case, maybe, but where there's a franchise model, mm -hmm. which basically has a direct. Uh, correlation with whether that franchise uh, company basically is appealing to somebody buying into because of the cost Correct. of build out right I mean and, and it's and it's funny because unless you are the kind of firm that actually understands those nuances you're just looking at it purely as an aesthetic exercise and right. it's not going to be the quality product that needs to be out right. there to compete and to basically serve the purpose of that client yeah, yeah. And I think you know a lot of the hotels obviously are they're franchisees yep and it just is really important that you you kind of try and back back up and listen and see how you can 
help them out and really take it apart. Right. You know? Yeah. And, Especially on, on these ground ups, you've got a new owner. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that. They don't have may have all the experience yeah. in Europe or China or someplace else and not here. Yeah. Right. And you know, the banks are gonna require a management company, you know, the the brand's gonna require a management company and they're going, Well, wait a minute, you know. Well, you're not certified by Marriott, you're not yeah. approved by Hilton. So here, now you've gotta you've gotta do this and you know, managing those expectations from the get go can is always been critical. I yeah. mean, there's always so much money involved and you know, they're just going, well, wait a minute, you know, what can we do? And I and I think that's, you know, one of the things that your firm, you know, really excels at is, is to bring that in, and, you know, let's put a little bit more oxygen into this room. And, right. And, let's take and, a little bit more time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. What's, what's the most innovative and creative project that you've had in your career? Hmm. And what would you do differently? Um, let's see. Innovative and I mean, there was a, um, I didn't personally work on it. I helped do a little bit of the marketing. Um, but there's a new project for, you know, Coast Hotels. Yeah. Um, and they're doing some really innovative things up there. It was an old building, a friend of mine that's um, doing all the branding for it. I think that they've done some really great, st- the storytelling's yeah. the most important part. Um, I like seeing boutiques that come in and they really take the time to understand the history of the building and right. um, little things that they can do. There was one in uh, Charlotte that a friend of mine worked on that took over a really old historic building and there was a big pile of bricks that were left over hmm. from part of it in the back and they, they, this company came in and actually did all the curation mm-hmm. for the art, for the um, store mm-hmm. um, items there and they go. actually used, this is really funny, they mm-hmm. used the bricks. Yeah tied them, put a little tag that gave the history of where they came from, and they sold them in the store, and they sold out of them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's great. Get your little I piece mean, of history. Like, take yeah, it you home. get a little piece of history, but that's yeah. what everybody wants, something a little bit unique Authentic. or different. Yeah. Yeah. Authentic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I love reading stories like that Um because yeah. that's why I love the boutique industry. They just are doing such well, great things. You get down to the gas lamp, and you have so much fun at some of those hotels, especially where they've, you know, <clears> like – it's the on does now, but when it opened is the Ivy. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was in there when that building was closed and they had a dirt floor. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, really, you're going to do this here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it turned out beautiful. And the old quarter kitchen that was there, uh, their, their restaurant was, the food was absolutely magnificent, you know, right up the street. And, and again, I, it, it's, it's super critical for that kind of thinking, especially when it comes to commercial real estate that is retail oriented these days right right super critical i mean you can't spend enough time actually to get that dialed in correctly one of the examples that i can think of that was happens that accident is the redoing of the packing house up in in, in anaheim mm-hmm. and there oh, was that's, a, right. that's right there, there was yeah. Siddiqui, who was on he the was show. way ahead of his time they, he was brilliant you, you know I mean, Nan, he nailed it you know they laughed at him i remember i went to school down the street in 94 and they laughed at him when he put in the lab and at, yeah. the, at the top the of the market, lab, remember, the anti lab, everybody yeah. laughed at it. Right, the anti mall, mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 they they laughed at him. And at the top of the market, he they, that was generating four hundred dollars a square foot versus one hundred dollars at South Coast Plaza. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then Anaheim comes after him. They take that now. The mix and everybody's sort of following that model. But the interesting story I was going with is right next to the packing house. There's an old car dealership. Used to be the Packard yeah. car dealership right there on Anaheim Boulevard. Okay, so when they were done with the packing house. They started um, impacting the area around it. They started putting in like beer garden and stuff like that. And there right. was this building, so they go in and they were going to put in an Omami burger. So Omami comes in to do a burger in there, and they realize that down below, because it used to be a Packard dealership, there's all these license plates that were never oh, issued. Wow. There you go. Okay, so when so to, cool. when you today you walk into that. And it still says Packard. Like, they actually went in and put in in concrete, Packard. Okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there originally, but they put in this. To tie it into that history of the building, there's a big chandelier that's hanging over the bar, the central bar, and there's sconces on the walls. They are all made from license plates that were never issued on any cars that were down in the the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And that is a unique feature that is authentic to that location. It now enhances the Omami brand based on that location. That was sustainable. You you can't go buy that chandelier on a store and actually no. install it in another burger no, joint, no, right? It is no. a sustainable thing yeah. in a world important importance of optics. That is a huge asset. 
and it was basically resourced down below Whoa. from unused license plates. Yeah, yeah. love it. Great. You know, story. you know what's kind of interesting is, um, you know, who kind of pioneered the mixed use at shopping centers was Rick Caruso. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was yeah. genius years ago with Americana. Yes. Yeah, I'll never forget when I first went up there. I was like, wow, this is a whole city. Mm -hmm. and you're like walking down a main street with yep apartments up the grove, above. Grove, all of it. And yeah. The, yeah, it was the it gold was, statue in the middle, a uh, yeah, la Rockefeller just, Center, and then the tree that goes in in the winter, and then the snow that's yeah, snowing. It, it was, yep. you know, it, that was kind of the first of the, and the other mall mall right. guys didn't want to even. Oh, he's crazy, and well, that's why he's now still, now he's still going. Yeah, you know, driving well, the, his boat in in Newport Harbor, yeah. and I wave at it every day, and <laughs> um, you know, some of these other guys are panicked because. They just stayed the same old, same well, old. Well, the, the, the brilliance, the brilliance of Caruso. I, I will. I, hats off for one thing. When Nordstrom got pulled from the Galleria, yeah, to the Americana, and in that negotiation, in that deal, he ended up with the space inside uh, the the, the uh, Galleria. So there's a space in a competitive in the competitive uh, property across the street that he has control over. <laughs> It was, there it you was go. Really it, was, it was very. It was an amazing move. I was like, "Wow, did he just actually establish yeah, a space within smart. a competitor space?" In, yep. in in that deal with Nordstrom. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're getting into our last ten minutes, Nan. Nan, so I want to ask you about what are some <clears> of your inside <throat> recommendations for making a project success, successful? Good question. Yeah. Um, I would think, you know, kind of circling back, you really need to understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. What's the real point? Um, and then really digging your 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 hands into what's the how are you going to make that that space an experience? Mm. Taking you know it may be just a, a standard brand, but how are you going to make it local? How are you going to make it um, unique? Mm -hmm. um, and how are you going to utilize the space so that they can have new revenue streams? Um, you know, like I said, the meeting space is really changing. How can you make it so it can go from a hot uh, wedding party party space yeah. to entertaining the local community with bands on Friday or Saturday nights um, to artist you know, reception artist yeah. receptions yeah. Yeah. you know really really thinking about that and then how are you gonna bring in some of the local you know do some research who are the hot local artists or who are you know who are some of the retail stores that might even be great to come in and um, supply some of the mm -hmm. the the materials or the room robes or sell tennis shoes. I mean, Local bands tennis scene. shoes, yeah. you know. Absolutely. We've got a lot of really cool history here in Southern California. You know, a lot of the um, clothing companies, uh, they've all, they're all here. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be nice to see some of that. And, of course, all of our surf and our beach. And I wish, I do wish that um, we could have a lot more properties by the beach, take advantage of the beautiful Newport Bay. I mean, I was born and raised here. I'm a Hogue Hospital baby, and I've always been frustrated. Fourth generation. Fourth Gavel generation. Man. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, you know, th thank goodness that there's a couple, mm -hmm. but we really don't have any any hotels that have a, no. a rooftop that you can take advantage. I mean, Bob's new place down at the Lido House is probably one of the closest. Yeah. It's a beautiful and it's, hotel. And it's a shame because yeah. nothing, we've got a beautiful bay with the <clears throat> Christmas parade and yep. all of that, and we just can't. It's just sad. It, you, know? Yeah. you know, and, and, and I think you're absolutely correct on the fact that there's a lot of hidden gems and oh, in terms is. of resources. I mean, I, I've shared this with Greg, and I've probably shared it on there before. You know, it, it, it just astounds me. When I walk into a property that's on the coast, that is basically in a community that has resources, it has talent, it has an art uh, yep. school yep. that basically does everything from fashion. You were talking about starting in fashion. Why are you not doing trunk shows for local fashion designers that are up and coming instead of actually spending tons of money to bring in something? Why aren't you basically providing the environment to basically support the culture and lifestyle that's being sold through those brands like Maui and & Son and, and Quicksilver and stuff instead of actually just throwing them onto a shelf with everything else that you're making? Right, right. You know, they used to do that. In fact, I told you I used to model. I was an in-house model for Newman Marcus here mm -hmm. and Fashion Isle is part of them. And um, I represented a couple stores in South Coast. And they would hire me to do trunk shows. Do you remember when Kano's was mm -hmm. along yeah, the bay? Yeah. So, um, and a lot of the local stores would bring that in. Neiman Marcus, I'd go out to, you know, some of the, the restaurants or right. hotels. And, right. um, and it was a lot of community cross-marketing. And I think that 
Orange County, L.A., it's it's very dear to me, and I wish I could see people supporting each other more and having yep. that integrated more because there's some really cool talent. There's, you know, beautiful, beautiful location. There's, um, I'm, I'm you're ex- right. You're you know, I'm excited right. about Lido Village. That that's been one of my mm-hmm. dreams to see that redone because I thought it was the most beautiful gem sitting mm-hmm. around, and it just almost went dead for mm-hmm. years. Right. But you know, we've got some work to do around here. Um, yes, we do. And well, and, and daring not to actually fill every single spot with either a real estate agent or a repetitive restaurant concept. I mean, that's the other thing sometimes where we fall or into bank. this. <laughs> well, where we fall, we fall into this. Well, banks got you got to put your money somewhere, right? And there's a lot of it around here. But you, we fall into this thing where it's like, oh, look, this worked over here. We'll just put five more of them down the street, oh, or, or you know, oh, don't start or, me on that. Or yeah. nobody starts with thinking about the mix that you put into a downtown area, like you know, like the Lido Village or San Clemente or Laguna downtown, like where it's, you know, think a little bit bigger. Yeah. Like, make it yeah. special so when people, mm-hmm. I mean, just from the tourist side and the tax, come on, city, why aren't you doing anything? Sustainability. You, you of, attract of your, more people here, you yeah. get more of your taxes, yeah. but you're not letting you're us put anything the on the water. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's kind of We've funny. got a unique community here that uh, doesn't always get celebrated in the right way. But you know, I'm hoping things one are of these changing. Days it will. Things are changing. So it takes a little, it takes so. a little guts and a little it takes time. You can't just basically rush it using a template. Yeah. You actually have to dig your your hands in and find out. Yeah. And find that. You one can't do a heli- and... You can't do a helicopter view when you're basically dealing with communities. Like and I that. think you know what? I'm very positive that I think that we're going to see some really cool stuff happening in the next yeah. few years because, you know, some of the more traditional cities like you know, um they have to see it happen somewhere else. Well, it's booming, you know, in some of the smaller states, Nashville and Charlotte. Nashville's and been on fire Portland, for a and, of years. So. And we could yeah. take some really good lessons from that and not be so oh, yeah. afraid of blocking well, it out. Well, the economic engines are changing, too. And you, right. you, you touched on the fact that a lot of the desirable locations, Craig even mentioned, that are, are built out. So now you're looking at infill projects. Now you're looking at spot zoning. Now you're looking at repurposing, right? And so right. all of that necessity... It, when you have all the land on the planet, oh, I'm just going to put this big thing. It worked over there. I'll put it over here. It, you have to get more sophisticated. So I, I, I agree with you. I think it is an exciting time, and mm-hmm. people, some people will rise to the occasion yep. and deliver. And the ones that are, you know, think out of the box and can get out there and try and push something new. I heard some new things are coming for Balboa Island, and mm-hmm. that's kind of my, mine and Craig's baby that i that's some of it I'm not home. I'm not on on board with. They're yeah. trying to Irvine it. Yeah. Oh no 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 yeah. No. Yeah, so I've been very uh, yeah, uh, vocal about that. Well, appropriate, so. right? Appropriate, yeah, let's, sensitive. Let's turn it into Irvine on the water. No, thank you. No, it yeah. should be something so. more like Montecito on the water. You know, well, I think you guys sexy. would probably pitchfork yeah. and torch the bridge, right? You'd just stand at, at <laughs> the other. Not me, not me. I'm, no, no. I'll throw torches My down My 20s, maybe, but not now. So. <laughs> well, here, you know, here's, here's an article that I, I picked up. Um, <coughs> we've got almost a century-old YMCA building in downtown San Diego. It's going to be reborn as the Guild, 162 uh, key luxury boutique hotel. Mm-hmm. Orem Hotels is overseeing the multi-year, eighty million dollar Marriott Tribute portfolio project. Wow! So you know, and he, you and I have had these conversations for years. I love adaptive reuse if it yeah, makes I sense, do too. and we've seen yeah. so much of it that really came off nicely in San Diego, yeah. in the gas right, lamp, right. and. You know, we another thing that just happened recently, uh, McWinney purchased the 149 key Hyatt house here at Irvine. Mm-hmm. Now we can't disclose the price, but it was a pretty penny. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're getting we're getting ready to wrap up, Paul. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of neat stuff going yeah, on, and there I is. think I think you're going to see more and more of it. You know, the uh, work has started on the SF Line Hotel up in San Francisco. That's going to be a 236-room line hotel. Um, $367 million project. Features 240 condos, 13,000 square feet of retail, 2,000 square feet of community space. So You, you know, another um, exciting area that's kind of come alive finally is Long Beach. I have, in the last two weeks, three cycles. I know, I know. I worked on a project. It had to have been 15 years ago, and it almost went, and then they went, nah. But, you know, they've got a couple of really beautiful um, historic office Mm -hmm. buildings that two of my developers are looking at to convert to. One's the ocean. I got involved with the city of that 
20 years ago. They, they called me in. They said, we want to turn this into Checkers Hotel. I said, never going to happen. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but now it's, you're starting to see it. They're, they're welcoming it. But it took such yeah. a long time. Well, it has, yeah, they have the right leadership in place. Mm-hmm. They, have, they have innovative, out-of-the-box mm-hmm. thinking. They have a person who's handling the Visitors Bureau and the Performing Arts Center right now that is basically equally in alignment with the mayor. You know, right. there, there, there's, a, there's a local artist district. The other thing with Long Beach that's interesting is it's sort of a little bit off the radar. I don't think L.A. and Orange County are really aware what's going in there. They, they were up in D.C. and they pitched Long Beach as an international city. There was a very sophisticated deck that was done. Wow. And the, bringing Always the arena back way. online, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a diversity factor. There's a culinary interest in culinary concepts that's going in there. It's really an interesting thing. It's funny it is. I think Long it's Beach, a really you know? neat thing to watch, you know, in the old ports of call. And- yeah. There, I, Palm Springs is another great, one. Great, Palm Springs is great, too. Palm yeah. Springs is it's another kind of one. Off the, it's gone crazy down there. Yep. Yes, it has. Yep. Well, we're going to wrap this up now. Nan, thank you for joining us today. Today's show has been brought to you by Rod Gantos & Associates and Park West General Contractors. Uh, we do have a special show Wednesday of next week. We're going to be making some special announcements here, so hopefully you can all join us then. And we're looking forward to this. Today's show has been brought to you by Production Wise Golden State Media Group, LLC. Thank you very much, and we're out. Thank you for being our guest today on Check Out California. We look forward to having you as a guest with us again in two weeks. Until then, you can always reach us through our Check Out California Facebook page or by emailing us at checkoutcalifornia at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. So do let us know what you think of the show and what areas of interest you'd like to see us cover in the future. Your feedback is very important to us as we continue to bring you the best hospitality our Golden State has to offer. Until next time, may all your days be filled with sunsets and palm trees. Now, go experience and check out California. From Eureka to San Diego and Malibu to Bakersfield, the California Lodging Investment Conference, Click is a one of a kind, focusing exclusively on our Golden State's hotel market. Click was launched in 2016 by Craig Sullivan, a seasoned hospitality industry professional, to harness the knowledge of our industry leaders, support our community, and educate emerging talent. Click brings together lodging professionals from California and beyond for one day of learning, professional development, and networking. If you are an owner operator, investor, broker, developer, lender, management company, brand or professional services provider, you should plan on attending Click 2 on March 8, 2018 at the Hilton Irvine Orange County Airport. We invite you to check out the California Lodging Investment Conference website at clickconference.com for the latest details and sponsorship opportunities. Early registration now open. And as a listener of the Checkout California radio show, please make sure to use our exclusive discount code of CA when registering for this one-of-a-kind California hospitality event that's sold out in its very first year.